Hey there, I'm Trevor Houston, the creator of the Who You Know Summit, and I'd like to welcome you to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. On our program, we'd like to show you a job search like you've never seen. Everything from getting noticed by employers, how to properly format your resume, and how to network effectively using LinkedIn to drive recruiters to your profile. We even take suggestions from our amazing community. So if you want to learn all things job search, go ahead and subscribe now. Focus. It's all about the job search. So if you want to learn how to land that next success, you heard them. All you got to do is subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on a thing. Welcome back to the Who You Know Job Networking Show, where what you know is important, but that's what's happening. Who you know? Who, who do you know? know? It can make all the difference in your job search. It definitely you know? can. All right, so we're excited. We just had a surprise landing for you. Mike Mediterranean just got back to his cash flow, but now. We've got a very special guest in the house who hopefully can help you to automate and machine gun this whole thing, okay? So next up, we've got Joseph Waltz, and he is a principal writer and career endeavor consultant specializing in resume and business communications, document writing, editing, and dissemination. Right, Everybody, right. please welcome Joe to the house. All right, Joe. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Illinois Joe. Yeah, in from Illinois, the Bears. No. The Stop. The bear, Bears. Gosh, whenever you do that, I want to just throw a mic at you. <laughs> it's all about the Cowboys. We don't do <laughs> what Bears do you think? What do you think, here. Joe? What do you think? I, I'm not a football fan. Oh, um, see, not really a see you guy. get no love so here. It, I got no dog in this fight. Come on, good. Joe. That's Come a good on, man. Joe. Joe, you're a good man. I appreciate that. Um, all right, Joe, we always like to uh, good answer, Joe. Have a, have a fun question for you, okay? So, okay, um, we play this game called Would You Rather, okay? So, would you rather have the lights on or off if you knew the room was going to be full of snakes? On. On. Yeah, because then I can tell if it's a good snake or a bad snake. That's a, that's logic. Mm, yeah. He's using data and logic right there. <laughs> that's science. science. Kind of my mo. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Science. Uh, Mark, what about you? Um, he yeah. kind of ruined it because yeah. after that answer, yeah, yeah, lights on, lights on for sure. Because you know it's so full of snakes. We're talking like Indiana Jones, yes. like pit of snakes. Yeah, like pit. that's how I was expecting. That's uh, what I was. That's how I interpreted yeah, it. Yeah, on, on, on. Yeah, yeah. Mark or Foster, what about you? Look, y'all, the lights are on right now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, we're not snakes. No, we're not snakes. Hey, but it's on. It's on. <laughs> you calling me a snake? We're not on. You calling I mean, me we're a not snake? On. We, I did, I guess. All right. Hey, uh, <laughs> I'm cool. We're good. Hey, uh, audience, tell us what you would rather have, on or off, if there was a room full of snakes. I got to know. Okay. We get sideways, okay? Mm -hmm. And we like to have fun around here. But right. recently, I was introduced to you, and... Uh, you showed me something that really kind of threw me sideways, okay? And so I wanted you to come in here and explain to the audience and to Mark and Foster, who really aren't familiar with the product and how it works. Yeah, I'm a recruiter. <laughs> um, about your robot application automation, like, like it's kind of backwards from what we normally teach our audience. So I want you to explain it to the audience. And then I even have a, uh, a clip I want to show them kind of how it works. Yeah, we'll cue that up in a sec, because yeah. yeah, let me explain something. Yeah. So I the, the automation is new. This is a new thing I'm doing. Most of what I do is, most of what I have done up until this point has been resume writing and um, helping people kind of find their their way forward, especially if they're changing or, if they're like changing career paths or they're transitioning somehow. And what I advise them in that case is probably really similar to what you guys offer. However, I named this new tool because uh, my four-year-old loves robots. And so I named it Beep Beep Robot. And what I designed it to do is to automate the job search process. Uh -huh. Basically, it logs into your Indeed account opens you you run your search and it opens every single job and applies to the majority of them within 20 30 minutes wow so okay so hold on so you showed me it and it goes through indeed is that right mm -hmm. connects to your indeed so 
you know, I, I've I, honestly, guys, I'll just be straight transparent with the, with the audience and everything. I've never even signed into an Indeed, Indeed account, so I don't even know the process behind going in, logging in, and creating an, an Indeed account. Mm -hmm. I would you do that. Can you? Can you? <laughs> well, I, I mean, shoot, I've never had to. So let me ask you this: So what? What's that process look like? Does it actually qualify the jobs? Uh, uh, based off of what you're looking for, or are you just applying yeah. for a bunch of random positions? No, it, it's not random. I okay. mean, it's, so th this is, you had mentioned earlier that this is a machine gun technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, uh, and that's exactly what it is. It's, it's going to hit every target, but it's not, um, you, you do put in search terms. So let's say you're in sales. Okay. You're in B2B sales and you want to maintain B2B sales or move up, move up into a management position where you're running a team. So we would put in sales manager, okay, or sales manager, industry, industry sales manager, sales director, sales executive. Those are the, the search terms, okay. right? And Indeed will kick up usually 20, well, what's 20 times 10? 200, 200 jobs that match those criteria. Okay. Um, sometimes it's 400, just depends on what you pick. But it shoots up those jobs within the circle of zip code plus X amount of miles, 25 by default up to 100. Um, then it shows you all the jobs that meet your search criteria. When you start the program, when Beep Beep goes to work, it just applies to pretty much all of them. So it just, it machine guns, because I you showed me behind the scenes and the tool, like within like 24 hours, it'll apply for like 100 jobs or something. Like how many jobs does it do? Well, I, I usually don't run it for 24 hours uh, because what happens is it you, you have, you within a 24 hour period, it only takes an hour or two to apply for every single job that meets your criteria. Wow. Okay. So in an hour, like you're just going to yeah. go usually, for an hour and it's Usually done. I run it for my clients. I can run it longer or the reason I don't sell it on an hour basis is because I can run it longer or shorter depending on how um, specific your criteria are. Mm. So if you have a very specific kind of job, right, if you're a very niche kind of person, to get to that 20 jobs or 30 jobs in a day, I would have to run it for 24 hours. If you're in something that is common, at least in regards to skill set, it'll take me five, six minutes to apply to 20 or 30 jobs. Yeah, so, so I'll run it for an hour. So, so it's 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 pretty crazy. I, I I'm gonna tell you like I like it, and I'm gonna say why I like it, because I've always said this: the the companies are investing in technology to weed you out. Okay. To take you out of the game you know they're investing in all these different personality assessments and all these different ats systems and investing in technology to put barriers in place okay so they're putting all these barriers in place between the the recruiter and the hiring manager so why not have some type of technology that can combat that and normally what I would tell somebody is not to just apply, 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 because how much time is that going to take? That's actually going to mm -hmm. take a lot of time. So this is about ROI. It's about getting back to your cash flow as soon as possible. And if you're just apply, 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 that's not a good ROI. You're not going to get there because that's a shotgun. But this is a machine gun. Yeah. Like, so the ATS is in the other automated tools that the companies are using are weeding you out this is weeding you back in weeding you back in like literally <laughs> like a sh like a machine gun like this okay like literally that's, that idea. Mean, you ran that's out about of right that's about right like how fast it is so actually i want to queue up the video real quick and joe uh there's no audio on the video so you can yeah, leave normally leave, so you can like leave our audio the clients on. the clients don't normally see it so like this is just what it looks like when it operates in the background when yeah. i run it I have a series of like virtual machine screens and you can kind of see them all blinking. But yeah. That's about it. Yeah. I mean, I just liked the fact that I, I was seeing it and it pulled up like all these different tabs and it was just brrr, like I sat there and watched you in, in, I don't know, in a 15 minute conversation I had with you and you were like, yep, it applied for, I don't know how many jobs it was in that, in that span. And I was like, oh my gosh. Right. Like, I think, I think 10 or 15. So, okay. So my question to you is what is the results, right? Because a lot of people are going to be skeptical, right? They're going to be like, oh, no, because this goes against, again, everything that we talk about with spray and pray. So skepticism, a lot of people are going to be like, no, that's that that's not the right way to do it. But if it gets results, that's all I care about at the end of the day. What kind of results are we getting with this thing? I'm getting I have yet to have anybody not get an interview in 48 hours. 
Oh my gosh! Wow. Forty-eight hours. Uh, most people. Most people. Yeah. Forty-eight Mike hours. Drop. Wow. Mic drop. Yeah. Forty-eight hours. They're getting interviews. And why? Why is that happening? Like, because you even told me you set up like a fake account where you were putting in. Like, oh yeah, you told me about this random. Wall, like off the wall answers, like to crazy things. Like you put in. Yes. Like talk to us about some of that, and you still got through the ATS systems, and because it's volume at that point. Like talk to me some of, about some but, of that. Yeah. So part of it's volume. Part of it is knowing how ATS works. So again, I, remember I do two different things okay. that, that I offer my my offer people. All right. right. Um. The way I've been doing research for years on my resume writing business is by writing fake resumes and going on fake job interviews. Oh. And I've noticed I, I've noticed over the years, let's see, in the last five years I've gone on I should have had this number handy, I'm sorry. That's um okay. I, I've got I go on somewhere between fifty and seventy interviews a year. <laughs> fake so, interviews. Yeah, fake interviews. <laughs> All right, tell um, me some of the off well, the wall. I would jump mic to that. No, <laughs> okay, I want to like you're a secret shopper. I like that. So tell me some of the off the wall things that you've put in your resume and still got through. I want to hear this. Oh, like like for the fake ones on the robot or just in general? Yeah, like just any of the idea. Yeah, just tell me some of the crazy stuff that you've done that still was you were still able to get through. I, I very often use names that do not match my face. Okay. And so I'll, I'll get a name and someone will have a preconceived notion okay. and they'll call that name and I'll walk up and say, that's me. <laughs> They're oh, like, so oh. kind of like Mark Elder? Yeah. <laughs> or There's nothing well, Elder no, about no, Mark. The latest one was I said my name was uh, Muhammad Al-Sawahiri. And um, the, they, you know, I walked up and said, that's me. And they were like, call me Mo. Call me Mo. <laughs> <laughs> um. So sometimes they let me in the interview. When I do stuff like that, they'll they'll sometimes stop me. But usually I'll go in on the interview and it'll be fine and everything will go great. So, I, <laughs> I interview very well. So, so, so the advantage to this kind of thing, right, is because you have volume, the way I picture it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the way I picture it is you are machine gutting your application in, in your, uh, your resume and all of a sudden it's you're kind of like starting to book these interviews on autopilot and then let's say i get 10 interviews well now mm -hmm. i get now i am in the driver's seat where i you should be i get to so be selective of, right there's the, the, the reason i i'm actually pretty passionate about this business about what i do and and how i help people i can i used to be a college professor and i needed to find a career that would pay me enough to live on and I needed something that would leave me with the kind of fulfillment I had as an educator. And one of the things I noticed about the job market is that it's incredibly dehumanizing. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that the, there's yeah. no reason for these companies to treat potential employers the way that they do. It's so and true. And so I devoted all of my research in how the job market works to combating that by trying to figure out how the world actually is as opposed to how the world ought to be, which is a common distinction people fail to make. And so one of the things I've noticed with blasting out resumes is doing exactly like you said. The power should be in the employee's hands. Amen. You should be picking between interviewers. You should not be the, – the number one mistake – and I say number one a lot, so – Apologies. <laughs> a common mistake that I see with people is that they get one interview mm. and then they take that job, even though like they may have reservations. Yeah. It may not be the interview they want, but like they're kind of settling. And I've I've always hated that. You should never settle. You're right. worth a lot more than that, no matter right. what they think. Woo! My girl. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it puts the power in your hands when you have a pipeline full of interviews, you're going to have confidence, you're going to be selective, you're going to be able to look at it and go, oh, okay, I, I, you know what, that one's too far away, that one's not paying enough. This one, actually, it, it may be not paying quite as much, but it's exactly what I want to do. And, this, right? and the robot takes away the first step. So you don't have to go looking for jobs. You don't have to, to say... Oh, here's my zip code within 75 miles or within 150, right? You don't you don't have to then read each one to see what they are. You can just wait for the interviews. Someone saying, "Hey, I'd like to talk to you more," and then you're like, "Who are you?" Mm. You know, it, it takes out half of the work. 
Yeah. I, I like that. Because, well, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, here's what it does too, Joe, right? It, it puts you into a an abundance mindset, mm-hmm. right? It takes you out of that scarcity mindset and it really puts you in a position of power, right? And so often, we've talked about this before in the network, so often we as job seekers go into an interview, go into a conversation, go into a network from a position of weakness, mm-hmm. of need, can I give some incredibly cynical advice? Yes. On on interviews? Yeah. Okay, so I apologize uh, for my cynicism beforehand. <laughs> All right. I like it. Here's here's my problem with interviews. When you go to an interview, right? You're terrified because for you this is a matter of life and death. Mhm. For the person on the other side of the desk, this is some annoying crap they have to do on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So my drop. <laughs> the the biggest problem the biggest problem with the whole yeah, interview true. setup is that you walk in scared to death and they are just kind of mildly annoyed. Mm. You know, you have to get over the idea that the interviewer is going to be keen and alert and excited because they're not. They're just trying to fill a hole that Jerry left when he quit two weeks ago. <laughs> so, right. uh, many of them are not like thinking this through, you know? And so it, it the it, it's advice that is much easier said than done. But the mm-hmm. number one piece of interview advice I give everybody is you cannot be nervous. Yeah. Because the energy you're trying to exceed is mild annoyance. They they can smell it, right? They can everybody smell can. It. No one anyone can. Yeah, they can smell you know, it. Doesn't, it. Mm-hmm. Even yeah, it doesn't Zoom. take spiritual powers or psychic powers to know if someone's terrified. Oh, 100 percent. Right? And even yep. through a Zoom and all that kind of stuff, you can still smell it. Body language, right? It's, yeah, and it's 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 yeah, tone. It's bad for the job seeker because you're not terrified for you know stupid reasons. Yeah, you know it's it's you know you're talking about your livelihood here. You know yeah. you have a lot resting on this interview, well, here- and the other person, you know, they don't really care very much, and you don't. You know, they they don't appreciate how terrified you are. No matter how many times you've been on either side of the desk, few people make the connection that you're going to be dealing with someone who's scared and that you should have a little compassion about that. Here's what I'm hearing, too. And, you know, we talk about you being in the driver's seat and you being able to now make the distinction between what kind of pay you're looking for, or what kind of, you know, whether or not it's a dis- certain distance away. You get to be selective about that. But I think more importantly, you get to be selective about the skill set required to do the job. You can now sort through and say, this is my match. This is my match to my skill set in something that well, I will be challenged at or maybe not. I'll be sitting there twiddling my thumbs, be bored. I mean, you're, you'll get so much more insight now as to whether or not you're going to be engaged in that interview or engage in that interview. Yeah, you're just I in talked the to a seat. client this morning about this. Who, who he's been running the program since, let's say I started running it for him on Thursday. He's been on three interviews. And he told me that um, one of them was not for something he would have applied for <laughs> and not in a good way, right? So he didn't go. But the other two were both for jobs he wouldn't have applied for ah. because he would have felt that he was underqualified, mm, which yes. another thing that I tell my clients and that I'll tell to every single person watching this right now, you're absolutely not underqualified or overqualified. Mostly it's underqualified people worry about being. Oh, I don't don't feel with this. Are, are any of you familiar with something called the impost, imposter syndrome? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with something called the Dunning-Kruger effect? No, I haven't mm-hmm. heard of that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Hit the Dunning-Kruger effect is the opposite side of the same coin. The idea behind the Dunning-Kruger effect, Dunning-Kruger effect is that if someone has a little bit of knowledge, they think they have more, and then they make stupid decisions because they think they're smarter than they are. The opposite of that coin is imposter syndrome, where you feel underqualified or like an imposter doing the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you guys a secret from psychology. Imposter syndrome only affects the competent. Only someone who can do the job will feel imposter syndrome. Huh. Okay. Interesting. It only infects the competent because the incompetent have done in Kruger effect and think they're great. Yes. It makes perfect sense. (laughs) So if you ever feel as if you're an imposter, as if you shouldn't be doing this, if you're getting away with something, that means you're good at your job. Hmm. I like that. I like that. 
So can and I so, be, and, yeah, yeah, go ahead, that's go ahead Foster. Uh, can I be ahead, a, sorry. A, a little I'm bit a not, not not I am too. That, that I, I don't want to be all way all the way a devil advocate, but um I was in a position to where I, when I was recruiting, I was recruiting a recruiting director and for a couple of three real real big companies. And my job was to make sure that we found the right candidate, that everybody was the right people to interview that candidate and that would be excited so we can show this candidate that we're trying to hire. Now, when we're trying to hire somebody, there's probably three or four other companies trying to hire them too. We want to be the one that, that snags that right talent, that we feel is the right talent. So I placed the right people in the right places with the right attitude to interview that person. So, and that is not you know, you don't see every company do that. I hear what you. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, no, no one does that. Yeah, <laughs> I, but for every are, story I'm like not yours, the only one out there. You know, we yeah, for, we started a, a network of us, you mm -hmm. know, recruiters that we just had a recruiter roundup last night of leaders in these companies that are set up to do exactly opposite from that. So there are there are three companies in Fort Worth and two in Dallas right now that unequivocally do that. I would like to to speak with them too because uh, there's there's an endemic problem <laughs> in the way there there's an endemic problem in the way that yeah, I hear you. hiring is done yes, and it like is. I joke this is that cynicism again I I joke that you know most of my living is made off of the backs of human laziness those are the those <laughs> yeah, are the yeah. <laughs> those are the links in the chain that I exploit to get my clients jobs well no that's a hundred percent true I mean they're putting all of these uh, barriers in place right because Otherwise, they have to face to face talk to all these people or actually look at every single resume. And that's not going to happen with the volume no, that's coming through. The way it works. So, so, so the reason so you're being so the way lazy. ATS works, the way this works, the thing, the thing that I'm exploiting with the automation, okay? Most of the jobs you apply for online, you're going to go through, you're probably going to go through a third party like Indeed or LinkedIn. Uh -huh. So, you're going to go through two ATSs. So you and 30 resumes that passed the computer got their thumbs up, right? You fill it. You, well, let me start from the beginning. You fill out that big application. You hit submit right, in under yeah. half a second, your thumbs up or your thumbs down. If your thumbs up, you and a pile of 30 or 40, if they're using Taleo, 30 exactly. or 40 are going to be handed to <laughs> handed to a 23 year old with an arts degree and no previous job experience who's given 10 minutes to pick the best five. <laughs> That's true. Not in and all cases. And she's going to sort through but, them looking to say no. Them, yeah. <laughs> you know, she's not looking for yes. The computer already told her you can do no, or that you can do the job. Well, I like it. I think it's a numbers game, and I think that well, if you're it able can to, be, if, right? If you're, it can be. If you're you able know, to combat technology with technology, then why not? Right? Yeah, they're I putting, mean, and, they're putting AI in in the way of your opportunity and your future. They're putting AI in the in 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 the way of your opportunity. Why not use a little AI to give you the leg up? That's all. Oh, I'm exactly. Saying. You know, like I, 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 from the beginning of doing this, I've always told my clients that I want you to get a job. I'm here, I, you know, yes, you're paying me, but you're, I'm, I'm here to help you. That's my job. You are my client. I'm not a recruiter. You're paying me, not the company. You're not my product. Uh -huh. And so I've always done my best to make sure that my clients get jobs. I have yet to have a client out of 5,800 resumes that I've written. I have yet to have a single client who didn't get a job. Now, well, I'm going to give you a mic had, drop for yeah, that. That's, I've had that's 16 uh, of those 5,800. I have had 16 that have not gotten jobs within two or three months. And so I had to rework stuff. I'm human. I make mistakes. But right, I can tell right. you of the people who've run the robot, I've had not a single one not get an interview in three, four days max. Right. So call it five days just to be safe. And I've had 100 percent success with it. Nice. Mm, that's yeah. that's what I'm trying to hear yeah. right there. It's yeah. all about results. Guys, we've had a lot of mic drops and we're getting close to time. So here's oh, what yeah. I'd like Sorry. to do. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. You're good. I want to give away uh I want to give away this tool. Like we're going to give Me it too. away. We're going to give yeah. it away to uh two lucky audience members. You're going to get to use this tool and then I want you to report back to me. And Tra I want yeah, you to we say need to know. I want that's you to say we, yeah. I want you to come back and tell me, "Hey, Joe's the real deal or uh Man, that guy Joe's smoking something. I don't know what he's smoking, but he's on something. But I want you to report back to me because I need to know. And I think this is awesome. I'm super excited about it. So let's give it away. Yep. Two. All right. So yeah, what's two of them? What's the question that we're gonna ask that we want the audience to oh, answer? Oh yeah. Okay. I got a I got a good question. What did Joe say he used to be? 
Oh, right? yeah. What was, his, what yeah. was his job? He, he said he used to be a... I don't. I and, wasn't even uh, listening. Oh yeah. Yeah, he said it. He said <laughs> I, it. I, I wasn't even paying All right, attention. All right. So that's Trevor the question. What, when he, when what he profession did Joe used to have? What was his? What job did he have? Yeah, tell us. Everyone's in the rewinding. I yep. know. Yeah, I'm like, right. I wasn't paying attention. What did he used to do? <laughs> it's kind of. It's pretty cool. Well, it was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Oh, yeah, I got it. Um, got I'm it? hearing Ali uh, Alyssa. She says professor. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So Alyssa, and then. Um, Kathy says teacher. She was the next answer. Are you going to accept that, or do you want to go with professor as your answer? You're like, your face. No, either one will do. Either one will do? Either okay. one. I'll give them to Kathy All right. and Alyssa. Okay. All right. Okay. Kathy and Alyssa. You're going to get the autopilot experience, okay? You're going to get to machine gun your job search, and I want you to report like back to me. And tell me, if you're going to get any interviews within how many days, you said? The, the longest? Let's, let's hedge and say five. Five days. I want you to report back to me and tell Five me what days. you got. Yeah, there All you right, go. there you go. guys. We got to go to a good, real quick Alyssa. commercial break. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Joe. We really yeah, do Joe, appreciate that was you. Good. That was real good, guys. We yeah, got to go to you guys a... so much for having me on. I hope. Uh, I hope that if they have more results, I'd be happy to come back and oh, talk about. Oh, one hundred percent. If you if you I get some that, results, yeah, that needs to happen. You coming back, guys? We got to go to a real quick break. Don't go anywhere because when we come back, we got Mark Dyson in the house. Trevor Houston here, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. We hope you've been inspired, encouraged, educated, and entertained all at the same time. For information on our different events, workshops, partners, or partnership opportunities available, check out whoyouknow.show for more details. And be on the lookout for our new mobile app coming soon. You never know how this show can help someone you know. You know, and if we've made an impact or put a smile on your face today, don't forget to hit that share button on your way out. Until next week, it's all about who you know. Bye.